Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to another video or hello if you're new here. Thank you for watching my video. Um, just a little quick introduction. I'm Liv, I'm 25 years old um, and I am mum to a little toddler called Arlo who is 20 months old. I have my own kids interior design business as well as having my Instagram account at home with Liv. I basically got together a little list because I really wanted to help you guys because I get loads of questions all the time and I feel like I wanted to just help a little bit more in terms of like if you're trying to design your kids space so I thought we could like design a little room together and do a mood board together and I wanted to share my top five kids interior design mistakes the biggest thing that I see that people don't do and it might sound really really common sense but honestly it's probably one of the things I see the most is lack of planning and I feel like planning is key to making a room cohesive to making sure things go together to making sure textiles wall color um, and everything sort of like interlock and go if you don't plan you could end up going and buying some piece of furniture or buying some item that completely doesn't go in your room and you have to try and make it fit and that's where you're going down the dark hole and you've just got to plan out the space and make sure that as well as like aesthetically things go you need to make sure that like size wise things go as well and work really well in the room and that you're making best use of the space i will give suggestions of how to like avoid these mistakes is doing a collage or like a mood board or some sort of like a, a design just to put all of your ideas together just on one page you can see that everything goes well um, and then start planning out like the sizes and and the dimensions of where you want things in the room so that would be one of my biggest tips if you're designing your kids space or any space for that matter um, and it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be like a Picasso design you could literally just open like a PowerPoint document and just put like different pictures on um, on the page and just make sure that things are cohesive really an app that i use for my mood boards is canva and i have the pro version because i use it for my youtube like thumbnails and everything like that i also use it for invoices when i'm doing like content creation and stuff on instagram and i use it for customer receipts so i have the pro version um but i'm pretty sure that you can just use the normal version um to do collages and mood boards also say like in the planning stages to try and just get together like maybe four different colors um just on that page and you can use a tool picker is it called a tool color picker i think it's called to literally go in on the picture and um like on the pictures you have and pick like some of the main colors that are in the color scheme that you're working with um, a suggestion I would have as well is to like if you're really really stuck with a design to start with a bigger item like a rug and then work backwards from that item so some of the time like I'll pick a rug and then pick out three or four colours in that rug and that will be the whole basis of the room um, so that's something you could start with if you're stuck um, and if you're not doing this mood board and like doing the planning stage of things you're literally just having a shot in the dark and um, it's going to be really difficult for you to design your kids space when it actually could be a really easy process and a fun process so number two of my biggest kids interior design mistakes is not future proofing your room and we are all guilty of this I'm guilty of this with Arlo's cot because I got a cot bed instead of a cot and now he's too tall for it and I'm like oh I don't really want to move into a big bed but um, I don't want to buy just a cot for the sake of it so yeah we are all guilty of this but I think my point is to just try and avoid having issues further down the line with things like this if you're thinking in terms of like in five years down the line could this still work that's a good sort of headspace to get in because obviously at some point you are going to want to redesign and like change things up in your kids space but I feel like the expensive things like the furniture like if you're doing panelling wall paint if it's expensive or it takes a long time make sure you're getting something that could work for later down um the line for your kid because that would just benefit everyone in the long run and what you can do is if you have like a muted color wall or a neutral color wall um you can like accessorize like i do with decor pieces and things that can be interchangeable when their style changes when they get older when their interests change and it's a lot cheaper way of doing it like for example if i had um if i bought a really expensive like safari wallpaper and put it all over the wall then that's 
that can be seen as not future proofing. Number three of the biggest kids interior design mistakes that I see and it's another one that I see a lot is not utilizing the space and again it's a very like intuitive thing that I'm saying but it doesn't seem to sink in to a lot of people's like design process and I'm not even just talking about like the space in terms of floor space but I'm talking about wall space too and honestly I think that people just need to like interpret a wall in a different way you need to think of a wall not as a wall but as a canvas like for example a lot of people will look at a wall and think oh I want to put a print there oh I'm going to plonk a print there um and maybe put two prints there actually and then that's it but that's not the way you should be looking at a wall you should be looking at it as a piece of art so if you had a canvas would you just put something in the middle of the canvas and not put anything around the rest of the canvas no you wouldn't you'd make sure that the whole like width height everything is used for example let me show you here um, most people might put a mixture of different prints on the wall, but by utilising the height and width of the wall, I'm able to create a balanced, aesthetically pleasing wall. So it's definitely important to think of like a height. So for example, you can introduce some um, ceiling scallops if you've got high ceiling to try and draw the eye up. You could use some bunting. Um, you could use like different tiny bits of like wall decor art or something or a sign um i've got a hot air balloon hanging from one of my um ceilings in arlo's room up there i've got some bunting i've got like a little balloon um, i've got a height chart and i think the important thing as well is not to overdo it but to utilize different height levels so you'll see for me like when i'm putting things up on the wall i'm not going all on one level like three quarters of the way up i'm going to put this there put this there put this there no i look at it in terms of I'm going to put something up high then i'm going to put something a little bit lower but this side like that i'm just going to try and balance it a little bit and make sure that the whole like length and width height and everything of the wall is used um sufficiently and i feel like it's always important as well like not to try and be too symmetrical so if you're going for something that's got symmetry try and add something that's like a little bit different and just like not symmetrical on one side because I feel like imperfection equals perfection when you're designing a room and things that are too symmetrical and too perfect end up looking quite staged so that would be my advice too so number four of my biggest kids interior design mistakes is copying others designs and um again this is something i see quite a lot and although it is flattering and it is obviously nice to try and um use other people's designs when creating rooms and use elements and use ideas i do it all the time like i think of i see bits from people's rooms and i'm like oh i really like that area of the room oh i really like that shelf and that's just natural like taking inspiration from other people's designs but I, I feel like it's necessary to like stress the fact that your kid's room is your kid's room. It's no one else's kid's room and it should be like tailor-made for them. So that's why when I'm doing kids' interior designs, I feel like it's really important to spend time at the beginning of the design to get to know the actual child or children that are in that space. Because at the end of the day, the people that you need to please is the kids and making sure that their room is special to them and is a reflection of them because it's their safe space and it's, yeah, it's their, it's their little safety space really, isn't it? So you need to make sure that it's a reflection of them. And additionally, I'm talking as well here about making sure that the room isn't just a carbon copy of another room because it needs to be adapted and be accessible to the child, especially if you're introducing like the Montessori method. Like for example here, I put the higher up things like the mirrors and stuff that I don't want Arlo to touch. And then here I put the books that I want him to grab and I want him to be able to access. Um, and I feel like it's important to adapt a room, put hooks lower, like all these different sorts of things um, for the child. And then you can adapt these things like as they get older. And for example, like I get sometimes some of my clients like, oh, I want a safari theme, but my child really likes cars. Um, but I don't want it to not go. And I feel like it's really important to say your room should be a reflection of your child. So if you want to have cars in the room and you want to have elements of cars because that's what they love, then 100% do that. 
And number five is going to be where I'm showing you we can design a mood board together. So number five of the biggest mistakes is going to be going too over the top with the theme. Um, especially TV character themes. I feel like it's important, like I said before, to incorporate your child's interests, but I feel like it can go too far sometimes, especially when you're like centering it around cartoons or TV shows. Um, so definitely bear that in mind. For example, let's take a look at Barbie. Having rooms like this are very sort of bright and although your child might love it for like a year or something, they are gonna grow out of this eventually and it's not future-proofed. Um, <laughs> so I feel like it's important to show you how we can adapt to this interest and create a room based off this child's interests. So let's look at incorporating some colors and items in a softer way. I'm showing here incorporating Barbie colors, toning them down a, a little bit to make them a bit more neutral. Um, and I've used like the typical Barbie colors here um, to create a more versatile um, Barbie inspired room. Less is more, so picking maybe two main colors, which will probably be our soft teal pastel pink will help really shape the room. And I found this cute little watercolor style mural to use as a centerpiece in the room. And then we could use a neutral soft beige to complement around the rest of the room as well. This one in particular is from Photo Wall Sweden. Then adding a pastel canopy for a reading nook zone will be really cute. Then we can use the idea of the doll's house, obviously from Barbie. Um, so I actually hit the jackpot here. And I found some shelves that are in the shape of houses and also matched our colour scheme that we wanted. So this was an absolute result. Um, and after this I found some neutral bedding because I feel like we already had quite a lot of colour in the room. And then I just wanted some pops of pastel in there too. And then I think it's important as well to try and think outside the box and think around um, themes. So instead of just like thinking Barbie like bright colours, maybe let's incorporate the Barbie font in the room. And instead of writing Barbie, we could find like maybe a wooden decor piece here, wooden sign that's in the Barbie font that gives the child's name. I feel like this room is such a nice way and like I hope I've explained it in the right way of like, taking a child's interest but toning it down as well and um, yeah making it future proof because if you think about it, the logistics of things like the neutral wall um, and we've got quite a neutral but pastely wallpaper it's still going to work long term if we were to change the room up we've got different things in there that incorporate the barbie style like the font the colors um, the shapes and everything but it can be future proof. So I feel like this is a really good example of how to um, how to design a room based off a child's interest. But do let me know if you have any questions about it below. Although I've gone through all five, I feel like one more thing I do really need to say. When you're designing a kid's room, I, I see a lot of it, especially people that come to me, clients, they're stressed. They don't know what to do. They're getting flappy. They, they just, they don't know what looks good, they feel like it's such a big pressure because they want their child's room to be perfect. But the biggest thing I can say to you is stop being so stressed. I know it's easier said than done, but stop being so stressed and just have fun. Like include them in the design, get them, look at some different bits with them and see what they like and just actually make it like a fun process because designing kids room is such a fun process. I obviously love it enough to do it every week with, with my design service. But yeah, it's just so nice to have a little safe space for your child. And I feel like it's so worth it in the long run. Obviously the designing and everything doesn't come easy to everyone, but I feel like hopefully I've helped explain some of the mistakes that people can make and how you can avoid them too. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a like if you found it useful and drop me a comment. I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.